This is fun. Drive. Behind wheel of automobile, we become rageaholic executioners, our neighbors hopeless, moronic, worthless pieces of human waste, stealing the air we are forced to share. She drives too slow. He never turns his damn blinker off. She pulled out in front of me, and I had to hit my brakes, so I wish her dead. He suddenly decided to slow down to make a turn without warning, so I declare him an offspring of an unmarried dog. She's putting on makeup. Oh, for God's sakes. He's on his cell phone, breaking the law, dangerously distracted while navigating his lethal transportation coffin. I suggest the place he should stick his phone, though he doesn't hear me. Good thing I don't have a gun or some sort of laser that would flip his car on its side and get it out of my way. Where's a cop when you need one? Oh, there's the cop. Yikes, better make sure I'm only going four miles over the limit, damn ticket-riding pigs. It's not me, it's them. No one follows the rules of the road. No one uses common sense. No one knows how to drive, except me. <laughs> poetry, oh poetry. And it begins with a quote, for darkness restores what light cannot repair. Joseph Brodsky. Poetry has been my ruin. Sucker punched my breath away tenderly held me with promises there would be peace while well, always and always letting me know I've just begun. Poetry I've much to learn, to do, to write. In poems it rains from wet mists dampening the streets, causing bare skin to glisten to torrential downpours that wash away the recent past. The best poets sometimes move between the drops not to stray dry, but to choose how they feel the rain. Poetry, oh poetry, I ask that you teach me more about the rain, but you demand too much at inconvenient times, keep me out too late, show me liars and phonies, hold up mirrors forcing me to see myself. In poetry, there is true light, epiphanous light beaming through clouds, dazzling as it kaleidoscopes through thick, leaf-bearing tree branches and transforms common rolling hill into masterpiece of unexpected textures and shapes and myriad shades of green. And then with blinding intensity, defensive poses are sandblasted, leaving me exposed, vulnerable, confused, half-finished. Poetry threw me out of careers. You are not short order cook, journalist, movie maker, comedian, actor, salesman, marketer, stockbroker, landscape designer, or consultant. Abandon all, you are poet. Yes, I said, as poet next hid from me in unsavory places, leaving crumbs in awful spaces, as weak and thirsty I stumbled in my search. Poetry, oh poetry, beloved poetry, forsake me not, embrace me as I have embraced you, truth me into knowing, save me from my ignorance, fill me with your knowing. Poetry, oh poetry, forsake me not, clothe me, embrace me, don't let me drown in the middle of this endless ocean after you've guided me to blow up the ship. Poetry, oh poetry. Okay, I think I'll have fun. Some of you may have heard of this guy, this famous uh, poet, who I have a love-hate relationship by the name of T.S. Eliot. He once um, said the following, poetry is not a turning loose of emotion, but an escape from emotion. It is not the expression of personality, but an escape from personality. But of course, only those who have personality and emotion know what it means to want to escape from these. Reaction to an Eliot quote. I got this. Fuck you, T.S. You are, I'll admit, more correct than wrong in your arrogant proclamation. I have sat through bad poetry and hundreds of readings. I have written many awful poems, but the perfect poem is a dead thing and I prefer life shouted irresponsibly with passion and emotions into the dark night. Words should stir and no one should hide for very long from the stirring or deny too much that our human imperfection is something better lost. Poetry, like love, is messy, sentimental, you pompous ass. Ask Alfred, go write your almost perfect poems, Elliot, but your boasting about this deserves exactly what you attempt to rise above and reject, this crude and personal 
emotional response. So last year I got this wonderful news. I had sent a poem to a friend of mine in response to his call to send poems that might be considered to ride the buses. They do this. They haven't done it for a long time, but they were having a contest to choose a bunch of poems that would be placed on buses, and uh, 17, bus 17 poets would also be part of various bus stops and displays and, and all that kind of stuff. And so I sent it to uh, Robert um, to kind of as a joke, and he submitted it. It got picked, and it's on a couple of buses, and there's a bus street, a uh, bus stop. I don't know where my mouth is today. There's a bus stop, and uh, I think it's third in spring, that has my um, a big poster of me with the hat and um, the poem and a little biography about me, so it's pretty cool. Anyway, the poem is, Dear Poem Owner, Sorry you weren't home. Use the words you hid to get inside. Moved around things, careful not to disturb much. Washed some dirty words. Ordered the ideas you planted and threw the adverbs down the garbage disposal. Seemed the least I could do. Thanks. Palm starter, infinity. At both ends are beginnings. Palm starter, 1110. Forgive me. I've forgotten the simple joy of observing leaves floating, spinning, falling from the trees. The ballet of leaf. Two tenths, I drove 10 miles per hour too fast to arrive a minute sooner to wait 10 minutes longer for my daughter to get out of school. Then the driver pulled out in front of me, drove much too slow, made an illegal left turn, making me miss my light. My hand gripped the wheel tightly, Bad drivers, lights that aren't timed right, unpaid bills, not enough income, too much to do, not enough time. The wind was blowing, the rain falling sideways. I saw a ballet that made me laugh. A leaf danced and twirled like a tightrope walker on the power line above. Defying gravity, the yellow-brown leaf used the wind to skitter along the wire, somersault, electric slide. Exactly, I thought. That's it precisely. And here's my homage to the most influential poet of the modern age, Undeniably Seuss. Oh, the places I would go and the things I could do and all the things I could think just to gaze upon your sneeches, smell your green eggs and ham, or touch your yurtle. My mouth waters when I think of your yin or you in the gops with the yellow socks, the mop noodle finch, oh, what I would do with your nasm of basm if given half a chance. Nothing could prevent this obsession I have, not Bipper or Skipper or Dinwoody, Slinky Stinky, or any of the other Fred Nettler brothers, not the single files and Zunny and Zucks, the South Going Zacks, Thinbook the Moose, the Quick Queen of Quincy, or even the Mayor of Whoville himself can control this scissors as or zuz of a walk-it I feel that surpasses my longing for Little Lola Lop or the Right Side Up Song Girls or even Yolanda Waldo Jorensen. Now don't get all Miss Fuddledy Duddle on me or tell me I'm no better than a peeping Nurkle or I belong with Van Vleck the Ripper of Vip. The Hork of the Elephant and the Maisie Bird told me in no quick quicker or clots that my pre pelt crew was made for your Sneelock. And you can count your zummers that I won't be denied. I'll count one fish, two fish, red fish, blue fish, win the butter battles and cooperate with Sam I am. But I'll hold your rooms, caress your girdles, and walk Woombus and walk with you down Mulberry Street if it's the very last thing I ever to will or do. And finally, thank you for indulging me. I like dead poets. I don't have to be nice to dead poets. If I'm bored with their poems, I can close the book and stop reading. They will never know. They do not ask me what I think of their poems. I don't have to give a I do not have to give a drunk and dead poet a ride home. They won't vomit in my car. 
They don't need cab fare. I have not been stuck with a dead poet's bill. I have not had to make excuses for a dead poet's behavior. A dead poet has never stolen a phrase or idea from me. I like dead poets. Someday, I will be a dead poet too. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dwayne. Thank you, Marilyn. Oh, wait a minute. Okay. I'm gonna do a little thing with Tanner here. That we rehearsed for not at all. He kind of knows what we're doing. a minor point. The truth will always float. Now pass me that joint. I haven't smoked in years, but now the time is right. My sleeves are wet with tears. I forgot to win the fight. It's kind of dry. It's kind of flowing. You wonder why it's not by Leonard Cohen. It's dark, I ever show you, blunt and rather stark, reflected in reddish blue. The song tower is closed, though there is a secret passage. Pipes have all froze, still I'm going to write a message. You say I'm old and reckless, faith of anointed pearl diver. I've strung a fantasy necklace, at least I'm a survivor. When all is said and done, after we're all dead, they'll know we had some fun, no matter what is said. Sarge Pepper's dark side of the moon, Joker man's wind still blowing, on the wire is a loon, singing song by Lenny Cohen. She laughed when she last saw me, you've gotten old, but not too fat. She held on to the platinum key, at least I know where it's at. They say you are forgiven, no matter what the sin. Some come with fast living, some you blame on gin. It's pretty lame, I know, but I forgot the words. Out of breath, time to go, migrate with the birds. It's kind of dry, it's kind of flowing, you wonder why. It's not by Lenny Cohen.